Today we're having a look at the McFarlane Toys Digital Edition Green Lantern and we're going to see if it's Crimson approved. So stay till the very end and find out what my thoughts are on this figure. First and foremost, let's take a close look at the packaging for the classic looking Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. You can see that he has, there's the figure right there. So happy McFarlane never went to the windowless packaging. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, they did. But now with this, you can see here's his lantern. Extra hands, Green Lantern in effects. You can see the two cards in the background. You can see the figure stand. Green Lantern and Green Lantern logo right there. And the side of the box, it says Green Lantern Silver Age. And the back of the card box is the cool artwork of the figure, I mean, of the cool artwork of Green Lantern that is also on the card. And there's that. There's the, there's the barcode in case you need it. And this side is just nothing, but this new McFarlane Digital box looks cool. Let's open this up and let's see what goodies are inside. Well, we know what's inside. Let's see what it looks like. Here's the figure out of the packaging with the accessories right next to him. Let's take a closer look at him, and then we'll talk about the accessories. Okay, first let's look at his head sculpt. So, as you can see here, the mask is not a painted on. It is actually a separate piece, which I prefer rather than a painted on mask. It's raised, and you can actually see it looks like a mask. It looks like a person wearing a mask. You can see the white eyes. See the nice hair texturing, the coloring is good, the sculpt is great, it looks like Hal Jordan, nice smiling face, maybe a stoic, more neutral head sculpt, was maybe that would have been nice to include, but I do like the head sculpt, the smiling face on it, looks good, it's got that nice little smirk, like Hal Jordan would. I see a nice Green Lantern logo painted on all right there. It's not a sculpted separate piece, it's painted on there, and the paint on there is perfect. You see mine just has like dust on it. But you can see the paint on there is some of the best paint I've seen. You can see the painting right here, all the way around. The paint's perfect, a little, a little, a little right there, but other than that, everything on here is good. You can see... Looks like a little bit of some brush strokes right there, but nothing too big, nothing to drive me crazy. Now, I know he wore, this is what he looked like at the beginning of the Silver Age, but eventually he did have the green on the shoulders for the majority of it. It would have been nice to have that on there, but this is what he first looked like, so I do appreciate this. Um, I believe this, I forgot what, body this was on uh, I want to say it's the blue beetle body but I'm not much 100% sure you can see black right here and then the white panda on the forearms you can see the wrinkles in the gloves here's a look at the lantern ring if it'll show up on camera you see the nice sculpted detail right there with the little Green Lantern logo. Well, let's talk about these wrist, these wrist balls. Um, they may look a little odd, but uh, it's different. They can hit. More, I will get more into articulation of it later, but it is different. Um, you can see he is rocking the figure diaper. And the greens are semi the same and it's not super noticeable like how it doesn't stick out super wide it's kind of flush with the body which is good Let's see the boots um, well, my one gripe is the, the ankle joint right here is like a different shade of green than the rest but nothing to drive me crazy see the boots all there you see the back Nothing too special. But all I have to say is, it's about time, McFarlane. You gave us a, green, a Hal Jordan Green Lantern that didn't have those extra line details. Don't get me wrong, the details look good, but 
a nice classic Hal Jordan. And believe it or not, this is only the second Hal Jordan figure McFarlane has made. Classic, like regular, if you, unless you count the Parallax one. Then this is technically the third one. But it's a nice smooth suit, no extra detailing. This is perfect. This is going to be my definitive Green Lantern. Now, let's get a closer. Now, let's take a look at the accessories he comes with, and he comes with a decent amount. So, let's take a look at those. He comes with a trading card with some nice artwork on the front, and it says Green Lantern down there at the bottom. And then on the back, you can see it sees McFarlane Toys Digital, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan's face, and the redip right there, and DC Direct. This is actually completely different than what we usually get, and I like this. It's a change of pace, and it's different than the other tr cars that McFarlane has included with these. And, yep, pause it there to read it. And, uh, and he also comes with the traditional McFarlane. Well, not traditional. A new display st stand that says McFarlane Toys Digital with the McFarlane logo right there in blue. Everything else is kind of the same. And there's the back. He comes with two energy balls of, they look like energy punching boxing gloves that, yeah, um, these have been included before, they're with the Yellow Lantern, Batman, and a bunch of other ones, and Hal Jordan Parallax. Can we get some, like, traditional energy constructs and not these all the time? Like a sword, like with Cal Rayner? And all the other ones, these are kind of getting boring. But there's those. He comes with a open hand for flying poses and an extra fist. And in the packaging, he comes with a Green Lantern ring fist and a holding hand. And you can't have a Green Lantern figure without a lantern battery to, hold, to charge his ring. I wish they all came with this. Unfortunately, they all don't. And there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of chipping right there on mine. I just now noticed that. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. That's a little bad. But you can see it has a nice Green Lantern logo on top, and everything else is as, yeah, green translucent plastic. And if you're wondering what he like holding the accessories, here he is with one of the energy ball constructs and holding the lantern battery. Now let's take a look at his articulation, shall we? It can look that far up, which is meh, and he can't really look down at all. His head can go full 360 degrees. He can raise his arms higher than 90 degrees. And we can't forget about the nice rotator cuff right here on the McFarlane figures. Mine's a little loose, but it's okay. And he also has a bicep cut. Double jointed elbows with a semi-decent bend. His muscles kind of get in the way. They can do a full rotation all the way around. Now let's talk about these wrists. The wrist articulation. It can hinge back and forth. His hand can go all the way around. And, as a bonus, if you twist it, you can actually get it to hinge up and down like that. A little different. It may look a little weird. But I think it actually works pretty good with this figure. Now on other figures, I'm not I'm not sure if it'll work. But for this, it's not a bad job. And you can see it's a little small, but it actually looks works good because your wrist is not supposed to be bigger than your hand, so that worked pretty good. He can arch back this far, which is good for getting him in some really good flying poses like this. And yes, in case you're wondering, he cannot arch forward. And he has a waist cut that co that can hinge that way and that way. And he can go all the way around. Pretty good McFarlane thigh swivel right here. His legs can go forward just about 90 degrees. And he can do a perfect split. Double jointed knees with a semi-decent bend. A cat. Hmm, god dang it, McFarland! why can't you put cap swivels on figures? Toe articulation, and I guess traditional McFarlane ankles balls that can go all the way around. 
hinge up and down with a nice ratchet joint, and pivot. Unlike McFarlane's opinion on a calf cut. Now, let's look and see how he scales with other figures, and I'm hoping he scales perfectly. Here he is with the oversized Batman hush. Here he is with the Platinum Edition Azrael Batman armor, and he scales better with the Green Lantern than Batman Hush did. And for some movie comparisons, here he is with Batman from Batman v Superman. And if this wasn't a movie figure, this Batman would scale perfectly. And here he is, Blue Beetle from the Blue Beetle movie. Again, the scaling here works pretty decently well. And here he is with his best pal, well at least the movie version of his best pal, The Flash from The Flash movie. Although I don't think anybody wants to be a best pals with this Flash. He put babies in microwaves, and in real life, there's some other stuff that's a lot worse. And as always, here he is with everybody's favorite, Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. Now I just want to give my final thoughts about the figure, and this is the perfect Hal Jordan that I would have wanted. I mean, the green on shows would have been nice, but no, that's fine. And it, it, the calf that on this figure in particular, where the calf is, where the boots are, it looks like they could have done a calf cut. McFarlane, what is your thing about against calf rotation? I know you have the rotation all around the feet, uh, the ankle area, uh, ankle area, but some calf rotation would be nice too. Because in reality, whose ankle can go all the way back? Unless it's broken. I mean, really. But all in all, no, good figure, good figure. Um, I like the paint on mine, the paint, there's no sloppiness. And then again, I did actually get to see this figure in person. I picked this up at my local Target. Um, the mask on here, I like how you can actually tell that it looks like a mask and you can see the nose underneath and you see how it's kind of layered on the nose and it's sculpted on there. It's a whole separate piece that's put on there. The sculpting on the hair is wonderful and it looks like how Jordan has this nice little smirk on his face because he's plotting things. Or how to defeat Sinestro. And the ring, the ring is nicely sculpted and it looks good. So I don't really have too many complaints about this figure. I mean, other than the green around where the ankle joints are and the diaper, they look a little bit duller than the rest of the green. Um, the rotator cuffs on mine are a little loose, but it's fine. It doesn't bother me too much. Although I would have wished that the head could look up a little more, but it's kind of blocked by the hair. But other than that, no, no many complaints about this figure. Um, I did, like I said, I did pick this up at my local Target, and it's going to run you about $24.99, and these technically aren't, aren't supposed to be released until, the th I want to say it was, I think they came out May 20th, I mean not May 20th, April 20th, and I picked it up before then, I thought it was going to be street dated, but it wasn't. I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you watch till the very end. Stay tuned for more videos, and as I will be reviewing the black and gray version of Batman Nightfall, and the digital edition of Aquaman, and as always folks, stay tuned for those reviews, but my final thing I have to say is, this figure is Crimson approved, and as always folks, have an amazing day.